Hi everybody and welcome to another Premiere on Script video. In this movie, what I want to do is just show you what it takes to get extension panels to load within Premiere. It's not going to be about writing scripts to get Premiere to do stuff for you yet, but this is an essential step in order to get your scripts to run. And if you already have a background with scripting in After Effects and you can kind of get some things going currently in Premiere, then this is going to be a great place for you to start. I will in the next couple movies start to go deeper into actually writing scripts, but I feel like this is an important starting place so that you can see a background of how these extensions run, what you're getting yourself into, and also to know that it's really not as complex as it may sound. So here we are on the GitHub Adobe CEP website. This is where you're gonna find just about everything you need to know in order to get your scripts and extensions running. It's just a little bit hard to find what you need. So what we're going to do is go into samples and then down to P Pro panel. And this is going to take you to a sample Premiere panel that has all sorts of stuff in this. Uh, you can actually, if you go back, you can download this entire samples project and then dig deeper into the files in here. There is so much to go through, but it, is good to kind of give you an idea of what you can do if you really build your extensions up more and more with more features on top of one another. But what we're here for is for this information down here. You can see that it tells you a little bit about what's possible, some you know background information, what you need to obtain and install, which we're going to talk about these a little bit. You really don't need to go out and download everything that's on this list right now. You will need, of course, the Creative Cloud Premiere application. The Premiere Pro Panel Sample Project is a great resource. But this ZXP sign command and this Xman command really aren't necessary just yet. Those are what you would need if you are creating this and wanting to distribute your extension uh, to other people, maybe outside of your team or outside of your personal use. So step number two here is what is really the first step to getting a panel running or at least testing a panel within your Premiere project. It's enabling loading of unsigned panels. Now what's an unsigned panel? I'm gonna go into Premiere right now and this is a little project I was editing the first blog movie in and if I go up to window and extensions and you can see these three examples that I showed in the previous movie but when I click on them they aren't loading. They aren't coming up at all. There's no response. What's happening is that I have set my Premiere settings back to their default settings, which is what will be on your computer, and Premiere's not trusting this extension that I'm giving to it. I have navigated to the extensions folder, which on a PC would be through the C drive, program files 86, common files, Adobe, CEP extensions, and you can see that I have these three blog example folders in here, which include our HTML, our JavaScript, and some other libraries. But Premiere is not trusting that right now, and there's one thing we have to do in order to make Premiere trust that. So I'm going to exit out of Premiere. So the first step in my Windows computer, what I'm going to do is follow the instructions. I'm going to add to a plist file this player debug mode with a value set to 1. So how do you get there? I'm going to go to run. I'm going to type in reg edit, which is going to take you to your registry editor. And then in here, you can go to current user, software, Adobe, and then find CSXS7. From here, I already have this up because I just had to delete this to give you the example of Premiere not loading those panels. What you can do is you can right click and put in a new string value and make that player debug mode. And then we can go in and modify that and make the value data as one. So now when Premiere loads, what it's going to do is it's going to look through those plist files and it's going to see, oh, 
they have set my player debug mode to one. They've allowed for the use of test panels within Premiere. Let's load all of these extensions, which are in the extensions folder. Now, while we're waiting for Premiere to load, what we'll talk about is what you have to do in order to get this to work on a Mac. So on a Mac, uh, you're not going to be at Program Files 86, Common Files, Adobe, CEP extensions. What you're going to do is you're going to go to your system library within application support, go to Adobe CEP extensions, and that's where your extensions will be located on a Mac computer. Just want to reiterate that that is the system library, not the user library. There's two libraries, which makes it kind of confusing. And on a Mac, what you're going to do is you're going to open your terminal and you're going to copy and paste this code into it except you're going to have to change your username a bit. This code is also in the instructions on the GitHub page. You can see defaults, right? Users, username, library, preferences, com.adobe.css.7plist, player debug mode 1. Basically doing the exact same thing. One more item to note is that this is applying to Premiere Pro 11.1 which is integrated what they call CEP7. So if you have Premiere 11.1, the current version up, this is gonna work just fine for you. If not, what you'll have to do is go back through this process and change CSXS7 to CSXS6, which would include changing that seven to a six right there, and then you're good to go. In the registry editor on Windows, you would go to CSXS6, this plist right here, and you would have to go do the same thing. It's a lot easier if you're just running the current version of Premiere, because it also allows for new functionalities within the scripting, which we'll also get to in a later movie. So now that Premiere is open again, I've modified my plist. Let's just go into the extension and make sure that it's going to load it. Window, Extensions, Premiere on script example number one, and there it goes. Our script is running great. All right, so now that we have Premiere ready to accept these extensions, that we're going to put in that file directory, that extension file directory. I'm going to talk in the next video about what that file structure looks like, what needs to be included, what is optional to be included. And I'm going to provide a template that way you can create quick extensions for your scripts with just a few changes. So I will see you in the next movie.